Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and I'm doing another video uh, answering questions. So as I've been telling you guys, I really appreciate you sending the questions in. We're going to try to keep doing that. Uh, if you guys do the super thanks, it helps cover costs of uh, answering those questions, and so I'll be more likely to answer them. So let's get right into it. How would you rank the current mainstream automated EQ offerings um, at managing multiple subwoofers? And would you always recommend a bit of manual EQ summation or MSO prior to running automated software? Okay, so we have Arc Genesis listed, Dirac, Odyssey, and then it says ECT, I think that probably meant, etc. Um, I mean, let's go ahead and throw in Trinov in there. Why not? Uh, it's mainstream enough. I understand it's not widely available, but so here's what I would say. Arc Genesis doesn't handle multi-sub very well, doesn't do a lot with that. So that's going to be bottom on my list. Odyssey also doesn't do a lot with multi-sub. Um, it, obviously, it's designed to handle, I, I believe it can actively... Oh, no, I heard that they did do something with the four, but I've never seen anything that suggests to me it's doing anything particularly good. It doesn't do a terrible job with it, and the newest version with the PC software seems to be generally giving better results, but um, when I've done it with two subs, I've had pretty good results. When I've done it with four, I didn't see evidence that it was making use of the four in a way that I thought was really good. I don't think they're doing what Harmon, for instance, put out or what Todd Welty had, had developed. Dirac really is. Um, what I will say is the approach Dirac is using and the approach that's used in MSO are somewhat related conceptually, and so could, in theory, be equally good. Obviously, each are making their own assumptions and handling it in their own way in terms of what they think is appropriate. Um, and with MSO, while there's a software algorithm that's spitting out numbers, it, it is, in the end, a fully manual approach. So you've got a lot more control. So all of these systems are prone to a problem, which is that they don't always get it right. They're not going to know they didn't get it right. You have to kind of use your eyes and brain to recognize that something's wrong. And there's not always easy ways to fix it. With Arc Genesis, there's zero way to fix it. You just rerun and try again. Move the microphone to some different positions and hope that whatever the heck threw it off doesn't show up. With Dirac and Odyssey, both of them give you very fine-grained control of the target curve. And so in the event that something happens, Dirac actually has a whole little like white paper or blog or something like that on, on this. Sometimes you'll get like a weird peak in the response. You'll look at that and be like, why the heck is that there? It doesn't make any sense to you. But the algorithm, in its infinite wisdom, decided that it needed to be there. Why? Don't know. You'd actually have to go into the back end. Dirac, I know, has the ability to do this. It's possibly Odyssey could, too. Take a look at the file and figure out what exactly was happening. But the best way to look at it is you've got a target curve, and you've got all these measurements, and then it's taking all the measurements. And remember, it's not averaging them. What it's actually doing is it's aligning them and then looking at the variation between that and the target curve. And it's creating like an error score. And then it tries to figure out what kinds of corrections it can apply that are going to minimize that error relative to the target. And sometimes the error score that you get ends up being really weird where, as an example, there's so much variation around the target curve at um, different seats that the one that gives the least error is also the least flat response. So you'll get like a peak at a certain frequency because of that. That's, and this is a guess because, again, you'd have to look at the specific scenario, but that's an example of how that could happen. And so the best way to fix it is you actually add that into the target curve. So you say, no, I want to dip at that frequency that you're peaking because I don't want that peak to be there. And then it would get rid of it. So Dirac says to do that. You can do it with Odyssey as well. Um, so Dirac is the best if you're using Dirac Live with base control multi-sub. The other regular direct live doesn't do anything special at the subs and actually isn't particularly good. So that's not, I would not recommend that. It, it doesn't do base management. That's actually part of the key of handling multi-sub is the base management. Now, would you be better off using some sort of EQ summation or MSO? If you're using direct uh, live, but not direct live with base control, sure, do that. If you're using direct live with base control, Using MSO is, is effectively redundant. It might give you better results. More than likely, it's just going to give you different results, and it would be debatable over which one's better. As I said, sometimes Direct gets it wrong. You know what? Sometimes MSO gets it wrong. I've done things with MSO where the results I got were completely nonsense, and I had to go and look and figure out what the heck was going on, and then I put in some constraints on it, I rerun it, and I get better results the next time. I've had situations where I've had to run it five times before I got sensible results. It happens sometimes. It just, you know, sometimes... The measurements are a little bit odd, and that's what it comes up with. Dirac is the same way. Sometimes Dirac comes up with really good results, and, the, and what you get is great, and other times the results are nonsense, and it's not great. So I would place it in this grouping as the highest, 
it, we're excluding now direct art and we're excluding uh, Trinov Optimizer's new multi sub. I'm sorry, I'm making like waveforming. Now, bring in art. Art is conceptually more advanced than all of these and can yield better results because it can do something none of them can do. It can physically cancel the mode. So none of the other ones are really canceling the modes. And by canceling the mode, it also has the ability to control the decay time. And so the decay time can be controlled depending on how effectively you've set up the system, how many basically uh, levers you have to work with. Um, it, it could make it anechoic, like outdoor bass, all the way up to as if you did nothing and anything in between. And so that's a really cool capability. But that's Derek Art in theory. Derek Art in reality, very mixed. I've had some systems I've done that were really good and I was blown away. And I've had actually, unfortunately, many more where that was not true. So what I'm arguing for now is that I think the software needs a little work, but I also think I need a little work. And Matthew Trinkline, who's a friend, who's probably one of the most experienced uh, direct art calibrators there is because he's the primary calibrator for Storm and it's currently only available on the Storm. Um, he is also finding very mixed results with sometimes it being totally awesome, sounds great, works really well. And other times it's a mixed bag and just trying to figure out what the heck's going on. It really works best with fairly straightforward setups. And when the setups become fringe, it has a really hard time. So in the couple of systems where I've seen it used on very fringe like systems, it, it just didn't have the feature set needed to do well. Now let's get into Trinov. Trinov Optimizer its standard base approach is not particularly good. What it basically does is set each subwoofer to the target, and then there is no summation. The summation is just what happens naturally in the room, and what you get does not match what you see in the software. So, so that's not a great way to go. Now, one of the common ways that the uh, really good calibrators for Trinov have been handling that in the past is that you actually take the subwoofer output, and instead of having four subwoofers or five or six or whatever, you actually have one subwoofer output and then you make it a four-way speaker for four subs. And then in the four-way speaker section, you go into that one and you apply time alignment, just like you would if it was an act. So you're making it an active speaker. So you set the time alignment. You don't put any low pass or high pass filters on it. You just time align, phase align the whole thing. Then you go back into the section in the, op in the uh, speaker setup where you can add PEQ and you add the same PEQ for every speaker if you're using a more standard approach if you're using MSO with it, which you can do, then you would apply different PEQ to each one based on what MSO spits out. So that's another, and you, you know, again, the, op, the time alignment should be the same between the two approaches. MSO gives you the time alignment. One of the neat things with the Trinov is that there's actually an active time alignment feature it has. So as long as the sub is wide enough bandwidth, which many of them are, um, it'll automate that and it does a pretty darn good job. Um, so that is that. Now go back to waveforming. What I'm finding with waveforming is that even if you have, it still has to be generally set up right, but even if you have like a somewhat off from correct, you can get very good results. And what you're going to get is much, much better than the rest of these. In, and I'm not going to say sounds the best, that's subjective, there's different views on this. But in terms of minimizing modes in the room, it does the best job I've seen yet, most consistently in canceling modes everywhere in the room. Uh, I just got back from a demo at Trinov's uh, headquarters and they played a 50 hertz tone and you could walk around the room and you could hear it. I mean, it would it was dramatic how much louder and quieter it was getting. And it wasn't like I had to walk from one end to the other to hear it. You could, people, we, I mean, we made a joke that if somebody saw the security footage of us in there, they probably would think that we escaped from an insane asylum. Literally, there was a bunch of us doing this because that's all the head movement it took to go from really quiet to really loud in certain parts of the room. And we had discovered these places and then we'd all go over there and be like, oh, wow, that's really crazy. And then they turn on the uh, waveforming and all of a sudden it was like, this didn't do anything. Not only did it not do anything, you could walk all around the room, it didn't do anything. You could get right up against a wall, it didn't do anything. I mean, I literally had my ear two inches from the fabric and I couldn't hear a difference than when I walked farther in. So it was extremely effective. Now, there were 421s in the front and 421s in the back, so it was a pretty serious setup to achieve that, but it doesn't change the fact that it worked extremely well. And you don't need 21s to do that. You can do 412s in the front and 412s in the back. You could do 410s in the front and 410s in the back. And keep in mind, 210s is roughly a 15-inch woofer, so 410s is like 215s. It's pretty good. Um, all right, so, so basically as an automated approach, 
like I said, Dirac with base control would be top of my list and the ones that are more widely available. Um, obviously, the new new breed of product are better yet than all these others. Um, but in terms of giving you the best, most consistent result, the EQ summation or MSO approach, I think is probably necessary with Odyssey, probably necessary with Arc Genesis. It's necessary with Direct Live. It's it's necessary with the optimizer. It's just not necessary with Direct Live with base control. It's not necessary with uh, the optimizer if you're using waveforming or if you're using, well, like if you're using the other approach, you are doing that. So I guess that's that's that. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, this is from Samuel Orth, Orf, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, thanks for sending the question. I think this is a common uh, thing that people come up with. The last thing I'll say about this is that you get a lot of people who talk extensively about how these manual approaches are superior to the automated approaches. And I, I got to caution you on this. Because of the degree of manual control, you can get better looking results. To say they're superior, I don't think that that is correct. Again, Arc Genesis is, of all of these, the least sophisticated, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That lack of sophistication means it's less likely to have big, bad errors, but it's the least sophisticated of these and does a pretty good job in the mid-base, mid-range area and can generally change the spectral balance fine. Real fine grain control is unnecessary. In the base, yeah, it's not the best. And yes, these other approaches can do a better job. Odyssey has gotten better over the years and I think is not bad right now. But again, I've seen some better results using MSO, for instance, than what you get out of Odyssey. EQ summation, though, Odyssey's actually gotten pretty good lately. Direct live with base control. And actually, Odyssey to a point in this regard, too, you're not beating that with these other approaches. I'm sorry. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. One is that they're using very sophisticated mixed phase correction approaches. And while it sometimes gets it wrong and there are some issues with it, you can't beat or replicate what it's doing. The FIR uh, correction that it's applying would be very, very difficult for somebody to apply manually, especially because it's doing so based on multiple measurement positions. And the vast majority of software on the market that allows you to correct for FIR doesn't have the same degree of sophistication in how it handles multiple measurements. Most of them have no tool for that at all. Eclipse has a tool that lets you actually sum multiple measurements for use in creating an FIR filter, but it's relatively limited in how it can handle that, and so it's not exactly the same as what Dirac is doing. So what I would argue is you really can't beat what they're doing. You're not doing something that's better or more sophisticated. You're doing something for which there's simply more manual control. If you're using Dirac Live with base control and you're getting bad results, and then you're using, let's say, MSO and you're getting good results, I would really look into why that is and what's different between the way you set up and calibrated each one, because it's pretty unlikely that Dirac is just stupid and having a hard time. It's a very sophisticated correction system. It's more likely that you're inputting something into it that it's trying to make use of, that's giving it problems, and it's having trouble coming up with a good result. Um, I also would, again, remind people, just because you have a really flat response here doesn't mean you have a really flat response here or here or there. And Dirac and Odyssey and, to a point, uh, Arc Genesis and definitely true of, of the Optimizer and Trinov is trying to make everything as good as it can, which is going to compromise right here. So, yes, if you run those and you take measurements and you correct and then you do some other correction manually, but you base it on just a measurement that's right here or a couple that are in this area, this is going to look a lot better than those other corrections. But if you took direct, for instance, and you only took your measurements right in this area, it's going to roughly do the same thing, or it should, if it, if it, you know, if it's working correctly. So again, thanks for watching the videos. I hope you found this helpful. Um, we're going to keep answering these questions, and I really appreciate you guys throwing those out there. I, I love that you guys like these videos, actually. We started doing this on a whim to fill time because we were having such difficulty getting proper edited videos out, and it turned out you all seem to like these better than the edited uh, expensive, difficult to do videos. And so we kind of went back to this as just an approach that we rely on. So I, I just want to say thank you. It's easier. You make my life easier to have to do this. And I'm glad this is helpful for you all. Um, I'm realizing that the videos I do when I do like an interview with Adam or Peter, they're not very popular. And I think it's not because you don't like Adam or you don't like Peter. I think it's because they're termed as interviews. And I think I need to start changing them and making them topical like Adam and I had a whole conversation about why music really is better for listening and sussing out issues with systems than movies. 
and got into it. This was just a conversation between the two of us. We didn't record it. And I remember thinking to myself, this would be a good video. And I bet you if I did a video on this, said something like, music should be your test material, not movies. And then we got into this explanation. You'd probably watch it just as much if it was just me. And it's always good to have another voice in there talking about it. But we'll see. Maybe not. Um, but thanks again. Thanks for watching. And uh, keep on. We got more coming. Thanks.